Hi, my name is April Hill and I'm an, a board certified elder law attorney and I'm here to talk about paying for long-term care. We all know the cost of long-term care is exorbitant and we are all looking for ways to pay for it. For some of our clients, they come in and they have long-term care insurance that they purchased while they were healthy and, and financially able and they are able to use that now for paying for their care. For others, they choose to pay privately and for a third group, they look to see if Medicaid would possibly help them pay for their care. When we consider with people whether they meet the criteria for Medicaid, we use a test that's a three-prong test. The first prong is what we call the basic, and that's whether you're over 65 or disabled by Social Security standards. It also includes that you need to be a U.S. citizen or a resident alien. Uh, and the third part of that is that you meet what we call the level of care, that you need the help that is being provided for in a nursing home. Believe it or not, everybody, no one can just move into a nursing home and say, I want to live here. Um, when they choose, they have to need the kind of care that's being provided. So that's the first prong. The second prong is an income test, and that test is set by Florida standards because we are what we call an income cap state. So your income needs to fall within a certain cap in order to be eligible. The nice thing is if your income exceeds that amount, there is a fix called a qualified income trust. That's something you would want your elder law attorney to help you with. The third test, uh, which is the one that most people focus on, is the asset test. For an individual, who wants to have Medicaid in a nursing home, that asset test is $2,000. They cannot have more than $2,000 of countable assets. And countable is a very important word here. The, um, if it's a married couple, the spouse can have $109,500 of countable assets in 2011. Um, so, when you see an elder law attorney, the nice thing is that there are things that may be countable assets that can be converted to non-countable assets that wouldn't count in that limit. Uh, there are ways that we can plan and convert assets so that people can protect what they have and still be eligible for those public benefits. Um, the one thing you cannot do, and it's really important to know, is you can't just give your money away and become eligible for Medicaid. I've had people say, why can't I just give it to my kids? That is called gifting, and there is what we call a five-year look back. And if you give away money during that period, you will be, render yourself ineligible. So it's one of the reasons it's very important to see somebody who really understands all the nuances of Medicaid in order to help you determine what you have, whether your assets are countable or non-countable, and how to plan so that you can be eligible as soon as possible. So if you would like more information, please go to www.hilllawgroup.com. This is April Hill, in your best interest.